110 frames a second in Cyberpunk with path tracing. Ladies and gentlemen, things are really starting to hot up in here. Not only because it's almost 30 degrees in this room and I'm quite literally roasting my shorts off, but because inside this box looks set to be the world's most powerful gaming laptop. And to say that I'm excited to actually get this box opened would be an understatement. And if you're wondering, by the way, exactly how this is quite so powerful, it's because this rocks an RTX 4090 laptop GPU and then an i9 13 980HX CPU with the performance cores able to be run at a consistent 5.2 gigahertz. This is a 4K 144 hertz mini LED display and if you want a gaming machine that can quite literally do everything then there really aren't too many options available. And obviously that sounds fantastic on paper but what exactly is it going to translate into? Well in this video sponsored by Nvidia and MSI I'm going to be walking you through absolutely everything you need to know and something I'm very excited to do is to actually get gaming on this and show you the performance of this so you know exactly what it is capable of. And I have to say that I really do like what MSI have done here with the design. It definitely stands out as something a little bit different and you're probably wondering why you have this bit at the back. Well not only is it going to mean that the screen is obviously a little bit further forward but much more importantly this is a laptop that will use a lot of power. I think it's up to 250 watts for the GPU and CPU to sort of share at any one given time in order to run 4k gaming at high refresh rates. So you're going to have to do something all of that heat. You need to dissipate it without the laptop quite literally cooking itself and so by having this little bulgy bit at the back it keeps the whole of the front of the laptop looking nice and pristine but still able to actually deal with all of that heat. I also love the fact that this is also a mechanical keyboard this is actually one by Cherry MX so when you want to type on this not only is it going to feel a little bit better but you get that satisfying click. And I don't know if MSI actually want us doing this but we're going to do it anyway and actually take this laptop apart and show you exactly what's under the hood. I mean actually massive shout out for MSI for doing this but they have actually given you standard crosshead screws on this rather than some other manufacturers that will use stars and obviously if you want to get into the laptop you can but it will save you buying a new screwdriver if you do want to say like add an SSD or something. So just remove all of the screws and then just gently lift it up like so that's what the inside looks like and then you will see inside your laptop and as you can see it's pretty action-packed here but fundamentally you do have a lot of expandability with the SSDs. This is the Wi-Fi card here, this is the battery, 99.9 .9 watt hours, which is the largest you can actually put in a laptop and it still be allowed on a plane. Absolutely love the fact that they're labelled as well. Here you can see Gen 4, this one is Gen 5 if you want to go for some even faster storage and upgrade this thing. And then I'm assuming underneath this box is our memory. Gently put it off. You can see there's a little sticky pad underneath. Here are our modules. There are also expandability slots under this as well. So if you want to add more RAM without having to swap this out, you can do that too. But let us pop this back in, put our cover back on top. That pushes down very easily. And then of course you have your cooling for your GPU and your CPU. It's always interesting, isn't it, to see under the hood. And it's nice to know that you can upgrade it relatively easily. So that's the nerdy bit completed, but how about we get started with the fun bit? So we will need to grab our power supply. And power bricks are one of those sort of need to know things that you might not always think about when you're sort of doing your shopping online because they're not in all of the pictures. This is a 330 watt power brick. So as you can tell, it is a little bit on the larger size, especially when you compare it to what you might be used to if you have like a thin light notebook that uses 30 watts or something. Serious business, so bear in mind that whilst this laptop is definitely on the larger size, but isn't actually too heavy which is quite cool you are going to need a bag that will be able to fit both of these in how are we doing in terms of ports by the way quite a lot you've got two thunderbolts here mini display port hmi 2.1 ethernet and then a usb super speed on the back this is all for thermals which is probably sensible with this to be honest and then on the left hand side you have your power outlet that looks to be proprietary fantastic that's on the left it means it doesn't get in the way of your mouse and you've got two more usb3 ports and then a full size sd card reader and a headphone combo jack so it should be as simple as plugging this in and turning it on Yes, there you go. RGB, baby. Would you expect anything less? Now, in the interest of time, I have taken this opportunity to get all of the games installed. And you'll see that we do have face unlock on this machine as well, which is ridiculously quick, which is pretty nice. But let's start with some Cyberpunk 2077. Oh no, this is going to be loud. Good morning, Night City. That was only on 54. Good if you want to party. But let us begin by going into the options menu and having a look at our settings. So we're going to run this at 4K, which is the native resolution 
of this display. We're gonna start with Ray Tracing Ultra. We'll leave DLSS set to automatic, but frame gen would turn on in a second. This is currently running in STR, but we could run in HDR, and you probably would want to run in HDR if you weren't gonna record this for this video. Very quick load time. Let's boot up and let's have a look. So bear in mind, this is running at Ray Tracing Ultra with DLSS no frame generation, you can see we're pretty much getting 60 FPS. And this is something at 4K that was pretty much impossible to do on the previous generation of graphics cards unless you had the very top end 3090, maybe really 3090 Ti. It's such a difficult game to run. But as you can see, this laptop is able to run it without any issues whatsoever. I mean, it is obviously gonna be dependent on what you're going to want to do if you're wanting to get into big firefights and things and have the most smooth, fluid gameplay possible, then you will want to turn maybe some of the settings of the resolution down to try and get yourself a little bit of a higher frame rate. And people obviously play games with completely different settings, right? I mean, when I first played Cyberpunk, I was pretty much aiming for about 70 FPS or so. That gave me the right sort of balance between image quality and smoothness. That was on a 3080 running at 1440p with DLSS set to balanced and not all the ray tracing turned up. So the fact that you can do this on a gaming laptop that you can literally take with you from place to place is pretty darn impressive. But I know a lot of you will say, this is a 144 hertz display. I want even higher frame rates. Well, let me show you DLSS 3. And the way that this works is arguably a lot more complicated because instead of lowering down the resolution, frame generation essentially guesses what the next frame will be and dynamically adds a new image between rendered frames, thus increasing the FPS. If we go into the settings menu, we find DLSS frame generation. If we do want to go even further though, we can turn this down to 1440p. And what will that do to our frame rate? Around about 130 FPS, 1440p on a gaming laptop. We love to see it. But what happens if we want to throw this laptop under the bus? And you might be thinking, what on earth does he mean by that? Well, they have actually released a full path tracing update to this game that pretty much only like the 4070 Ti on the desktop side of things can actually run with a smooth frame rate. So I'm interested in how this fares. I'm also going to make sure frame gen is on and I'm gonna set DLSS super resolution to balanced. And I genuinely don't know what sort of frame rate we're gonna get. I know it's gonna drop, but how much is it gonna drop by? Really? I mean, I was expecting this to be running at about 45 frames a second. There was no way in my head we'd be able to get 60. But there you go. On what MSI are touting to be the world's most powerful laptop, you can get almost 100 frames a second, Cyberpunk 1440p, DLSS balanced, DLSS frame gen. That's quite a long list there. You get the point, path tracing, almost 100 frames a second in Cyberpunk. And you've got all those lovely reflections and all of that natural light, full path tracing most intensive part of the game and we're getting about 80 to 90 fps that is pretty wild now obviously there is something that we do need to address if you haven't already noticed it and that is the noise levels of this thing because on one hand all right it's definitely not the quietest machine in the world we knew this was going to be the case it's using a lot of power and obviously it has to do something that heat but i will say that the frequency of the noise is actually on the lower side which is something that really does annoy me on cheaper laptops they have smaller fans and they're higher pitched and even if they're not quite so loud they sort of pierce your ears a bit more. Whereas this is actually a fairly comfortable noise. I mean, you are going to need to wear headphones to get the best results to not be able to properly hear it. And obviously if you are gonna do like voice recordings and things and you'll need some like Nvidia broadcast software to reject some of it. But genuinely, if you are after a laptop of this class, it's really not too bad. Next, title. And once again, we're gonna start by running this at 4K with pretty much everything turned up to max. And as you can see, we're currently getting about 150 frames a second. 150 frames a second at 4K on a laptop that has a 144 hertz 4K screen. And we haven't actually had the opportunity to talk about how good this thing looks yet because it is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, obviously, if you're gonna want the best results, you're gonna want to play an HDR compatible game with that mini LED screen and just let it do its thing, it's going to look absolutely out of this world. But even if you are gonna to wanna to play competitive multiplayer games and you maybe want something that is a little bit lighter like Apex Legends, then you are actually gonna be able to run this at an appropriate frame rate to get the best of the resolution and the refresh rate. It is pretty wild, actually, I really do have to say. Let's turn this down to 1440p, though, without blowing the whole thing. And what has that done to the frame rate? Now around about 200 FPS from a gaming laptop. What more do I need to say? My job is done.
I also want to take this opportunity to say that the thermals on this are actually pretty good. Bearing in mind, once again, the amount of power that this thing is able to consume. We're currently looking at around about 75, 76 degrees on the GPU and then around about 80, 83 on the CPU. And I've seen laptops that have gone up to like 95, 97 degrees, quite a few that even thermal throttle. So the fact that you are able to have something that is fairly cool to the touch, I like the way MSI actually put the heat over the other side of the laptop so that the WASD keys stay relatively cool. At the end of the day it really is all about balance and i think msi have pretty much hit the nail on the head with this remember what i said a second ago by the way about the hdr mini led nature of this screen and how that's going to give you the best results i've just opened some dead island 2 just to sort of illustrate this and this is actually the first time i've seen a mini led display on a gaming laptop and it is just wild it's going to be so hard to describe on camera but essentially all of these bits of fire are just so much brighter than the rest of the screen. Yet it looks natural. You know when you have like a normal display and you sort of turn up the brightness and everything just gets washed out? That's not what's happening here. Everything is properly mapped. So the darks at the top of the screen here are nice and dark. Then everything else that's meant to be light is nice and light. But because you've got this mini LED backlight, you've got loads of different zones behind the screen, which essentially means that the fire can be really bright and the dark areas, you guessed it, can be pretty dark. It's nifty tech. And while obviously it's not going to be ideal if you're running this on a battery if you're using this properly full power juiced up with the mains the results are pretty spectacular that looks absolutely ridiculous how could the screen reproduce that in terms of the performance of this game, by the way, this is Dead Island 2, so it's one straight off the presses. This is running at 4K with FSR set to the quality preset. And as you can see, we're getting around about 90 frames a second or so at the ultra preset. So again, another title, we'll have your cake and eat it. Realistically, I think I'd be someone that'd wanna like hook this sort of game up to a TV, maybe use a controller and sort of get the most out of it that way. But if you do want to play it on the laptop screen itself, this is another title. There's no reason to down res it because you're getting more than enough frame rate straight out of the box. But let's press on now to a game so popular, even my mother has heard of it. Some Fortnite. Not saying she plays it. Maybe she does in her spare time. Who knows? But here we are anyway, running at 4K absolute max settings with DLSS set to balanced. Fortnite is a bit of a weird one. The first time you open it up, you will sort of get a little bit of stutter. I think it does some like shader preloading in the background or something. But once that's out of the way, you can start to enjoy your proper native frame rates. And here you can see we're getting around about 80 to 90 frames a second or so. The game does look absolutely ridiculous since the Unreal 5 update. I mean, I think it's one of the best looking games out there. If you like the art style, then it's gonna literally blow your mind. But obviously, as you can see, 70 frames a second or so is fantastic for what you're getting. But if you want to play this more competitively, you're gonna to wanna to aim for 144. So let's go down into the settings and we're gonna leave literally everything for now, but we're gonna turn virtual shadows down to high along with effects and post-processing. And as you can now see, our frame rate has increased. We're looking at around about 100 to 120 frames a second or so, which is a whole lot better. To be honest, you're not really gonna notice the difference in terms of quality anyway, but obviously having that extra bit of fluidity is a whole lot more noticeable. And I've just been taken out. Which is annoying because I was going to show you 1440p. I mean, we can just spectate, can't we? What are we getting? Exactly the same settings. You're now looking at about 165 frames a second. So clearly, if you're aiming for more minimums towards 144 frames a second, then 1440p is going to be the way you're going to want to go. Personally, that's probably what I would do because on a screen size like this, it is more about the way it feels rather than the outright image quality. But I have to say, when you pair this sort of laptop spec, so this GPU and this CPU, with this screen, it does actually start to make a whole lot more sense. And there are plenty of different laptops available with loads of different screens. You can now get 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. It's all gonna come down to what you wanna play on it, really, because the mini LED screen on this is ridiculous. This on a gaming laptop, I really see the appeal of. I love it. But obviously, if you are gonna just play more competitive things, then maybe going for a lower resolution would make more sense if you're going to be getting a high frame rate. It all comes down to what you want to do. I think actually this is probably about right for me, but obviously it is um, not the cheapest laptop in the world. You are paying for this specification. So the question very much goes out to you guys on this one. What do you make of the GT77? Do you think it is pretty mind blowing that you're able to get very similar to last gen top end performance on a gaming laptop, or do you think this is overkill? Do you think you'd want even more? I'd absolutely love to hear your thoughts, so let me know down in the comment section below. But absolutely smash the like button if you've enjoyed this, get yourself subscribed, and of course, if you do want to check out current pricing on anything featured in this video, you can find it linked down below with my Amazon affiliate links. But thank you so much for watching this video, we'll catch you in the next one.